here. Hey, Michael, good to see you. The other day, you said that you you guys know the Trailblazers inside and out. They obviously know you guys inside and out. Like, what are the like? What does the series hinge on when you guys are so familiar and are so competitive, and obviously have a history with them? What, what, what does it hinge on? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure they feel the same way about us. You know, two years ago, seven game series. Uh, we played each other in the regular season seven times. We played each other in the preseason twice. Um, I think it's going to come down to a lot of things, you know, discipline in terms of uh, executing the game plan, personnel discipline, you know, taking away the tendencies. You, know, you go back to the last game we played them, Mike, our third game in Portland a few days ago. And that first quarter, you know, we, we acted like we were guarding a team who wasn't a – deadly three-point shooting team. We gave up nine threes in the first quarter. Um, we all know that Damian Lillard is an all-NBA player. Uh, C.J. McCollum uh, would probably have been a multiple-time all-star if he wasn't playing in the Western Conference. That's just how deep the West has been in the guard position for many, many years. But C.J. is terrific. We all remember what he did in game seven against us two years ago. Uh, the addition of Norman Powell. Now they have three guys on the perimeter that can get theirs at any time. Uh, you have two really talented physical bigs and Yusuf Nurkic and Ennis Cantor. Um, and you have arguably one of the greatest one-on-one -on -one scorers in NBA history, in Carmelo Anthony, who's still doing it at a high level at this stage of his career, which is really impressive. So um, the three-point line will be ultra important. You know, uh, we know that they're second in makes and attempts. They take 42 a night. And when you guard the three, you give yourself a chance. And we've done that. You know, I think we've guarded Damian Lillard probably better than – most teams have, and that's a challenge. Um, the rebounding, they're a top three rebounding team on the offensive glass. Um, so, uh, and, and with, with the, all the guys that we have out, you know, uh, we're going to need guys to step up and make shots. You know, Nicole's going to have to carry us, obviously, but other guys will have to step up and uh, be ready to compete on both ends and contribute. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a fantastic series. Chris Dency with Altitude. Hi, Coach. Good to see you. <laughs> um, I mean, Michael Porter Jr., uh, this obviously is not his first playoff go around, but last year was in the bubble. And I'm wondering what, if anything, can translate for a young player like that from a bubble playoffs to one now that he's going on the road and going to be facing fans and travel and, and all that goes into a, a normal NBA playoffs. Yeah, I mean, obviously that'll be you know new to Michael and a few of our other guys, the you know, playing in a hostile environment. I'm not sure how many fans Portland will have, but they will have fans. Uh, the travel, as you mentioned, you know, those are some of the things that you didn't get to experience in Orlando in our 19 playoff games. Um, but what doesn't change is the games, the style of play, the physicality. Um, and, and with Jamal out, with PJ out, uh, with Will Barton, um, you know, still working his way back. Uh, you know, Michael's going to be ultra important for us on both ends of the floor. He's got to be that second scoring option, um, you know, for us. So I think Michael starting, coming off the bench, um, playing big minutes, making big shots. Um, you know, he, he's played in big games and had big moments. So I think from that standpoint, uh, I don't think this is going to be something new for Michael. You know, he was really important for our postseason run last year. And uh, I have no doubt that he's up for the challenge this year. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Hey, Coach. Uh, and MPJ follow-up, basically. Why do you think he's so much more ready this year than he was last year? I mean, he, he contributed to your playoff run last year, but in some ways I thought he was found money. But this year, like you said, he's got to be ultra important. And, and why do you think he's so much ready to, do, to have that bigger role? Yeah, well, I think last year was a big part of it because, you know, it was such a weird year. I mean, the season gets shut down after our game in Dallas. We finally pick up, and we went down to Orlando, you know, just, you know, we didn't have anybody. We had all bigs, <laughs> you know, and, and Michael got a tremendous chance to play in the eight seeding games. He played so well. He was first team all bubble for those eight seeding games. Uh, and I think that allowed – Michael to get confidence in himself, but also his teammates, the coaching staff to say, okay, you know what? 
um, we can throw more at this kid, and he's he's more than ready to take it and run with it. And that translated into the postseason. You know, obviously, two seven-game series against Utah and the Clippers, and then obviously playing five games against the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Uh, you can't put a dollar sign on that amount of in-game experience for Michael Porter. And, you know, you got to go back to the beginning of this year. We as a team got off to a slow start, one and four. Michael in January barely plays due to COVID protocols. When he came back, he was struggling with his shot for a little bit. But after that, I mean, Michael Porter just, even before Jamal got hurt, you know, Michael was playing at a really high level. And most importantly, he was doing it in a very efficient manner. And then when Jamal went down, 18 games to go, well, what's going to happen here? Are we going to go 500? How are we going to be able to withstand this and weather the storm? And Michael continued to step his game up even more, allowing us to go 13-5 and five without Jamal Murray, which was the second or third best record in the NBA during that time. Um, Michael's got tremendous belief in himself. He works his butt off before practice, after practice, and uh, he's taken full advantage of the opportunity that's been given to him. And um, he's still got plenty of room to grow, kids, and these playoffs will be another opportunity for him to kind of cement his status on this team and throughout the league. Should, should he expect Portland to uh, – I mean, if I'm Stotts, I'm like uh, – I know what Joker is. Joker's the MVP. And Michael Porter's obviously a talented guy, but I'd run everything at him I could just to, because he's still a young guy and challenge him. Do you, you know, should he expect that? And he's re- is he ready for that, for being the focus of another team's attention? Yeah, well, well I think in you know, the last 18 games, we've seen a lot of that. Obviously, you know, you can't replicate the playoffs in any of those last 18 games, but uh, I think we've seen a lot of that ever since Jamal, Monte, PJ, and Will have been out. They know that we need Nicole and Michael Porter to score. That's not a secret. You know what I mean? Uh, those are our true leading scorers. So, yes, I do fully expect Portland to start, you know, Robert Covington on him, uh, give him different looks, put a smaller guy on him, get into him, really crowd him, uh, you know, definitely amp up the physicality and the aggressiveness. And it's really going to be a wonderful opportunity for Michael to experience that as, hey, Last year it was Nicola, it was Jamal. I mean, Jamal Murray, people forget, he averaged 31 points a game in the playoffs last year. He had two 50-point games in the first round. So without Jamal Murray, obviously we need other guys to step up in the postseason. Uh, and, you know, Michael's going to have a great opportunity to do so. And regardless of the results, what a wonderful opportunity and growing uh, opportunity for Michael to kind of battle that and figure out a way, and we will help him to combat that. A.D. Wingy, Altitude. Hey, Coach, you've mentioned it a couple times now, but that series that took place a couple years ago, I know these are two completely different teams now at this point, but how often are you thinking about that series, the way it went? Do you use it for, as motivation? Do the players use it as motivation at all? No, I mean, obviously for the guys that were here, You know, I think we all have the memory of them celebrating on our home court after the game seven win, uh, a game in which we were up in the first half by double figures. So I'm sure that still uh, doesn't sit well with the guys that were on that team. But as you mentioned, they're completely different in so many ways. Uh, They've changed how they do things, both offensively and defensively, as have we. We've got new players. So, you know, it can't be a rallying cry when a bunch of your guys weren't here for it, you know. Remember the Alamo. Alamo, I wasn't here for that. So um, I think it's more about preparing for their team right now. Uh, We've grown since that point in time. We took a step forward last year. Uh, I believe last two years in the playoffs, out of the current playoff teams, uh, no one has played more playoff games than the Denver Nuggets at 33. So we have guys with experience. Aaron Gordon has played in the playoffs. Austin Rivers has 45. DeVale McGee has played and a bunch of them won three championships. So uh, we're just going to focus on our current team and the current challenge of playing this Trailblazers team. Have more of the Action Network. The Action Network. Wow. Yes, sir. Uh, Michael, <laughs> if the Blazers, since adding Powell, um, have changed a little bit of how they're using Dame, he's isoing more, he's rejecting more screens, and that gets him away from the trap, which is causing problems. And it's a reason you guys have had a lot of success versus him. My big question is 
how much do you go into the series or any series with expectations of what the opponent is going to do versus trying to cover for all possible, you know, different adjustments they can make out of the box? How do you approach you know, right. what you've seen from them before versus trying to plan for them, trying to get ahead of those things? Yeah, I think as you prepare, you know, and we have a fairly good understanding of, you know, who they are, as as do they with us, uh, Matt. But, you know, they, they finished the season on a real positive, strong note. You know, I think uh, we had gone in there and won a close game after our game. They lost to Memphis twice in close games. And then they, they finished up on a real high note. So I don't see them changing what they've been doing as of late because it's working. Their defense has really picked up. Their paint defense last 12 has been exceptional. Um, offensively, we know that Dame and CJ are going to be in a ton of pick and rolls and isos. Uh, they're not a high scoring team in terms of fast break points per game, but they are the number one scoring team in the NBA in terms of drags and double drags. So it's early pick and rolls to free Dame and CJ up. So I, I, we anticipate them being who they are. And that's what's great about the playoffs. You talk about the potential adjustments that they may make, that we may make. And you, you touch on them with your team, but as the series goes on, as the one, game one goes on, that's when you look to employ different tactics and respond to theirs. So, you know, right now, this is our first practice. It was a terrific practice, a lot of energy. Uh, guys worked extremely hard. Uh, just trying to figure out how you're going to guard one of the da- most dangerous backcourts in the NBA. Uh, and you couple that with three-point shooting everywhere into really skilled bigs that can hurt you in the post in the pocket and on the glass. So it's going to be a hell of a challenge for our group. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, coach. All right, thank you.